They're finally here. I've got the Epiphone inspired by Gibson Hummingbird. I've got the Gibson Hummingbird. Which one's better? We're going to find out. Bird's the word. Stick around. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on the notifications, and like our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, visit our Teespring store linked below for our custom designed t-shirts. So Cooper, we have been actually waiting for this guitar to come in for, for a bit, yeah. for, for, for a little bit. Um, and we've had a ton of requests on the channel from people asking us to do one of these reviews. And so we just want everybody who's been waiting for this to know, it's not our fault. You have to blame Gibson. We've just been waiting for the guitars. And as many guitar companies have experienced, um, there's delays and setbacks and stuff. But you know what? We finally received our first inspired by Gibson acoustic guitar. And uh, right out of the box, what would you say? We're impressed. We're impressed. We're impressed. Yeah. It's very so cool. So we're going to go over the specs. And, you know, there's a lot that is very similar between these two acoustic guitars. Obviously, there should be because this one is inspired by that one. Uh, but there are some kind of quirky and interesting differences between them that we want to point out as well. And then, of course, we'll do a demo so that you can hear the differences for yourself. But you've got the Gibson Hummingbird. The OG. Right and this here. is the original. So if you're not familiar, and we've covered this before, Gibson's lineup in electric and acoustic guitars is split in uh, two different segments. You've got the modern and the original. This is the original. Uh, it's the one we tend to order. I think it's the, the most popular of the two. So. Yeah. Um, so square shoulder dreadnought, spruce top, mahogany back and sides, and uh, obviously the, the stunner. The, yes. the pit guard, you know. Why it's called the hummingbird. Yeah, um, <laughs> which is, you know, kind of the most recognizable thing, I guess. Split parallelogram um, on the inlays and just kind of... Yeah, Keystone style tuners, hummingbird, of course, on the truss rod cover. And you've got, you know, the the darkened kind of ivory binding that graces this. Now, this is the antique natural mm -hmm. or the antique natty, not natty light. But antique natty movie. ice, I think, is <laughs> but it's more going for here. Yeah. And then, of course, there is the uh, the the cherry burst or heritage cherry burst uh, that's available for it. Um, and yeah, I mean, th now this is the original, so it has the bags VTC pickup in it. Um, I forget off the top of my head what the modern has in it, but it's got Grover tuners and things that are just a little bit different. Now, construction wise, of course, this is a square shoulder dreadnought, it's got the scalloped bracing, hand scalloped bracing. Um, and it's got the 24.72 inch uh, scale length, if I'm recalling that correctly. And if I'm not, someone will obviously point that out in the in the comments mm -hmm. below. Um, but yeah, it's the tried and true uh, hummingbird, and you know, it's 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 a historic guitar. It's you know, we've been fans. I love the sound that the you know mahogany spruce square body shape gives it because it makes it different than the mahogany spruce sound that you get out of a J45 with the shape of the guitar and the bracing. Now, when we opened the box and we took this out, um, there, there were some key things that I loved right away. Uh, the first thing that I focused on is this finish. Um, the first time I saw, it's kind of a semi-gloss. So this isn't satin finished and it's not a gloss nitro finish like the Gibson Hummingbird has. It's really more of a semi-gloss polyurethane. And I, I think this reminds me a lot of the finishes we saw in Furch yeah. Vintage Series guitars. Um, and so it's got a luster to it. It's not completely flat, but it's not really shiny. And I, I just, I kind of dig the feel and the look of the finish. Um, obviously, we should say something about the top. This is Antique Natural. Uh, these are not the same. No. <laughs> so this is, this is your import Antique Natural. And this is, you know, really kind of more of a, more of what an old guitar looks like after mm -hmm. about 30, 40 years. You know, that, that spruce really kind of browns, and so it's really giving you that kind of vintage tint tone, uh, similar to some, you know, some of the stuff Martin's done and whatnot. Now, you pointed out something interesting on the top, and yes. that is the pit guard differences. Um, and so yeah. let's, let's hold these two up, and, and people can see, because uh, Cooper's... Are, uh, artistic eye caught this. Yeah, I. So first of all, you can tell the accents on the hummingbird and the flowers and the butterfly on the inspired by Gibson are orange, 
over here, it's kind of this yellowy lime green. Just right off the bat, I kind of prefer that. I think it fits the, I mean, it blends in better. To me, this is obviously the classic, but the weird part is like all the shading and the accents is like slightly different. Yeah. Um, which is, I guess they have to do that for some reason. I don't think they have to do it. I mean, Gibson owns Epiphone. I, I think about They've it. They've chosen though, to do there's it. There's like certain reason. things between Epiphone and Gibson, like they'll make them look very similar, but just a little bit different. So to kind of drive home, like this is not. I could see them not wanting like these to be interchangeable parts. Yeah. You know, so that could definitely play a role I, in it. I, makes me wonder if like every single radius and measurement along there. No, it's different. Like this, that is a sharper that edge. That is sharper right there. To the pit guard than this. This is definitely more of a beveled edge. Uh, the plastics feel different. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I was messing with this one earlier, and it's kind of a harder plastic. This is a softer, kind of tackier plastic. Um, you know, the grain that's being used is different, obviously. As you've pointed out, the artwork is different. It really, you know, again, inspired by, not exactly alike. Yeah. Um, that's a good way of, of kind it, of It looks it. good, though. It looks it really look nice, good. and it fits the guitar well. Yeah. Um, so, so that's a quirky difference between them. Now, they both have scallop bracing, and I'm telling you that because if you look at the specs on Gibson's website... Uh, or any other website, the specs for this guitar won't say s traditional hand carved scallop bracing like that one does. It actually says quarter sawn spruce, which is just a way of cutting spruce, which tells <laughs> us absolutely nothing about the shape of the bracing. So prior to this video, um, I got a little MacGyvery with it and I dropped my, uh, well, it didn't drop, I slowly lowered my iPhone <laughs> into the guitar. I believe it was um, a colonoscopy of the guitar that Chris performed. <laughs> He's being polite. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I was able to confirm, indeed, it's scalloped bracing. Machine scalloped bracing versus traditional hand scalloped bracing in this case. Um, again, this guitar is all solid, which is, I think, a big key takeaway on this guitar. So you're getting scalloped bracing, you're getting a solid Sitka spruce top, solid mahogany back and sides, you know, mahogany neck, just like this. They, it has the Keystone tuners. Um, I'm sure they're different. They're Epiphone Deluxe versus Gibson Deluxe. So they look the same. I'm sure inside they're not the same. Um, and, and this, of course, has a Fishman Sonotone pickup, which is normal for a guitar in this price range. And that's probably the biggest difference between these guitars, the price. So this one is... Is it like 38? It's about 30, yeah, 38, 49, something yeah. like that, I think. Um, you can check it on our website, alamomusic.com. This one is $7.99. So it's, it's a $3,050 difference between these two guitars, which is substantial. And so the question is, how close did Gibson get it without it being too close? Because I, I know obviously they don't want to rob you know, sales of this guitar. And of course, they're not built in the same place. This is made in Indonesia by Epiphone. That one is made in Bozeman, Montana by Gibson. This one is pretty much primarily still to this day built a lot by hand. And this one is obviously not. Um, but at the end of the day, if you have been wanting this, and can have only afford this, this is a really, really good guitar. Now, some of the other key differences between these that we need to mention, because they, again, like the pick guard, they're quirky. This one is a slightly different scale length and nut width. It's slightly shorter scale length and slightly narrower nut width. And I, when I say slightly, like, you could get into the minutia of it, but like one is 43 millimeters on the net and one is 43.82 like millimeters. It's very weird, actually. And I kind of, to the point we're making before, wonder if it's maybe just because it has to be a little bit different. Is it a tooling issue? Is it a, they don't want them to be like too compatible between each other? Although I don't know, like taking necks off and stuff probably wouldn't happen. But anyways, it's kind of weird. Um, you probably wouldn't notice it right away. The neck shapes are different. This is a more rounded, kind of more modern feeling neck shape. Um, and they both have bone nuts and bone saddles, and they're both hummingbirds. This is an Epiphone one, and it's a dang good Epiphone one. Yeah, talk about everything we've seen with Epiphone Electric, closing that gap, doing really great stuff within that price range that's getting so close to the lower end Gibsons. It's like the same, even a little more impressive straight out the box, like just to see 
how beautiful that guitar is. And it's more evidence of what Epiphone's doing. I mean, Ep Gibson is making a concerted effort to make Epiphone not just cheap Gibson, because let's face it, that's kind of what Epiphone's been for a long, long time. It's cheap Gibson. And before Gibson bought Epiphone, Epiphone was a more expensive competitor of Gibson. And so in addition to improving the guitars, making some really inspired by guitars that are all solid wood construction like this and very well made, they're also focusing on original Epiphone designs, which is very cool to see. Uh, but this is, I think, a fantastic way of bringing the Hummingbird, which is just a historic kind of quintessential flat top American acoustic guitar, to a more affordable price point and making it really more in line with what a Hummingbird should be, far beyond what like the, the previous Hummingbird Pro that was offered by Epiphone was. This is a much, much better, much more improved guitar, in mm -hmm. my opinion. So Yeah, totally. Let's hear them. Let's hear them. We're going to put them to the test. You're on here for yourself. Quarter sawn bracing, that's actually scalloped, versus traditional hand scalloped bracing in these two guitars. Check it out. Thank you. 
So there you have it, the Gibson Hummingbird versus the Epiphone inspired by Gibson Hummingbird. Uh, so now we've played both, you've heard them, and now we're holding different ones. You know the thing that becomes immediately apparent when I, I grab this one? Let's see if, I, I, maybe you could tell if we do this in reverse. After holding the Epiphone, switching to the Gibson, the smell of nitrofilus <laughs> finish fills the nostrils. That's definitely a difference between these guitars. But they feel different, um, and I think they're both fantastic. I mean, you can't argue against an actual Gibson Hummingbird. It's, it's kind of a famous guitar yeah. for a reason. But this is such a cool really homage. Nice. Yeah, you can really tell that they were um, inspired by Gibson. You know? And you can tell, <laughs> that, uh, I, I like the decisions that they've made with this. And I like that uh, there's been a lot of care in, in crafting this. Um, you know, obviously it's it's a more of a machine built guitar, but the initial setup and specs and decisions on how to go about the design uh, was fantastic. I think. Yeah, and I really I like the finish a lot, like the semi gloss kind of kind of thing. It reminds me of that custom shop J forty five. It's that kind of hand rubbed varnish kind of feel. This is obviously not a hand rubbed varnish, but it feels really nice, and I think it looks really good too. Yeah, semi gloss is great. Satin is great. I'd love to see more kind of semi-gloss um, nitro finish guitars because, I mean, you actually see those in the custom shop stuff because that's kind of what happens over time anyway. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. Feels good on the hand um, and it just, it's, it's a good look, good feel. So anyways, if you have any questions about either of these guitars, you want to head to our website, alamomusic.com. There's also links below in the description of this video that you can click on to view information on either of these guitars. They're both fantastic instruments, and I think you know if you want and have to have a Gibson, you're definitely going to get the Gibson Hummingbird. But if you've wanted a Hummingbird and you're just not there yet and you need something that's more affordable, you really cannot go wrong with the Epiphone Hummingbird, the inspired by Gibson Epiphone Hummingbird. And I wanna make that distinction because this, this is a better guitar than like the Hummingbird Pro and things that have also been made by Epiphone in the past that were also arguably inspired by Gibson. Without being said, they were inspired by Gibson. Uh, whatever that means. So, your key takeaways? Yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the, the other inspired by Gibson stuff. Yeah, I can't uh, wait. It's really exciting. Um, but overall, I mean, right out of the box this morning, when we took it out, we were impressed like from, from the second it came out. So, luckily, people have been looking forward to seeing this because we see it on like every single video all the comments um, but it was worth it it's very worth it to check them out um, you know yeah. do this long enough and you it's not judging a book by its cover but you pretty much have an idea of taking the guitar out of the box or case if it's going to be good you know? yeah do this long enough you kind of get an idea like oh that candy coat finish is going to make it sound terrible <laughs> so anyways and, and to cooper's point we will be doing more of these as we get the additional guitars in so thank you for your patience um, and we will continue to bring you more of these comparisons as they arrive. If you're new to our channel, this is what we do. So if you liked it, make sure you give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications so that you know about more videos and help us reach 100,000 subscribers. We're on our way, we're gonna get there soon. And when we do, it's gonna show you something really, really cool that happens, I promise. So click that subscribe button if you haven't done so. Keep coming back for more at the end of the day, whether it's a bird inspired guitar or not, the best guitar in the world is the one that you are playing. So keep doing so, making music, and we'll see you next time.